The House of Bob is made possible in part by Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash the House of Bob. Last time on House of Annihilation, the heroes of our story puzzle their way through the fifth level of the Tomb of the Nine Gods, attempting to gain information from a mysterious psychic presence to no avail. Once more uncovers the secret hiding place of a strange red gemstone, the group open the door to a massive underground lake. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Serpent. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beast Master, with my little buddy Hamlet. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. My name's Trevor, and I'll be playing Moore, the dragonborn warlock who has been trapped in the Tomb of Annihilation. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! The gruff bearded and serious countenance of Darg Vetterig is lit by a flickering torch. He's in a dark cave with pockmarked walls, and he is surrounded by his crew. Haxail the half-elf, Moore the dragonborn. With them is a half-orc woman, tall and lithe, dressed in finely made, but a very tattered jacket, nervously clutching her mandolin. There's a crimson-skinned tiefling man with holly tied to its horns, garbed in a single black bolt of cloth that's wrapped tightly around his body. An albino dwarf cowers near the entrance of the room, his eyes jumping skittishly from the cave walls to his companions to the pedestal in the center of the room. Speak to the damn thing, Reese, Dark demands, pointing towards the center of the cave chamber. To the pedestal, where a crystalline box houses a small humanoid skull floating within, rotating gently. Reese cautiously moves forward, reaching a hand up to his chin, tucking his horned head down, mimicking the dance of a stag approaching a dangerous rival. Who are you? Reese asks. In front of the tiefling, the skull's eye sockets emanate a blue light. The jaw hinges, and a tiny girl's voice speaks directly into their minds. Reese flinches as he hears it. The orc moves closer to Darg, and Haxale's eyes glitter in wonder. What's happening? It whines. Why can't I see? I am Reese. Watcher of the Boiled Grove. Who are you? The tiefling asks. That's weird. You have a weird name. I'm Nevertech. Where am I? Moore speaks up. You're in a damned tomb. A, a, a tomb? Why? Why is it so dark? Won't you please turn on a light? From around them, in the niches and pockmarks of the wall, the crew hears skittering like a wave, like a wind blowing through a crowded port at nighttime, ships knocking against each other and ropes clattering. Darg licks his lips nervously. From the walls, another voice, this one dark and raspy and hungry. Oh, oh yes, Captain. Captain. Bring, Bring your, your life, life forward. Show the little girl, girl what she is. Wake, wake up, up the sleeper and live the nightmare. nightmare. I don't like this. The orc's eyes are wide, pulling a wand from her belt. Stand strong, Heizemmer. Haxale cautions her. Stand strong, replies another voice. This one like black bubbles in a tar pit, burbling with laughter and malice. Yellow mist begins to flood the floor through the door. Strong flesh for my stool. Suddenly, a massive black form drops from the ceiling, razor claws like pitchfork tines sprouting from its hands. Sagging black breasts and oily hair whip around as this cackling creature slashes Heizimmer across the throat, splattering the half-orc's blood across the walls and across the faces of her companions. The dwarf flees. The crew panics, unleashing spells and arrows and swinging their blades. The voice of the little girl screams and screams in their heads ripping apart their psyches, echoing through the hallways, reverberating like waves. Waves like yellow smoke, like ants on a corpse, like an underground lake, unseen and unheard for centuries, but lapping forever, eating the inside of a mountain until the day it finally collapses. Moore looks out over the gently lapping waters of the underground lake, runs his eyes up and over three massive cogs spinning above and in and frothing the water. Water that echoes. 
He thinks for a second that he can hear a distant laugh like a cackle, and he turns back to Crate, Lee, and Douglas. Rusty metal conduits stretch from the cavern walls and ceilings to these cogs. They rise about 10 feet out of the water. You can tell that they also maybe sink down about 10 feet into the water, and the ceiling is 10 feet above the cogs. There's all these chains and ropes and doodads hanging from the ceiling, some of them supporting these dwarves that appear to be doing some work, keeping things running almost. You see that the water of the lake is slimy, with pinpricks of phosphorescent light twinkling in the mark moving around. You think they might be some sort of crawfish or crab that glows in the dark? You've just come through a wooden door set into a work stone column that stretches from the bottom of the lake to the cavern roof and is attached to a nearby wall with a stone conduit, probably the hallway you just came through. You currently stand on steps of moss-covered stone that descends to a stone dock where ropes lash a pair of rowboats to a dock post, and there's a rusty iron cage wallowing in the slime held aloft by a chain and winch. What do you guys do? going home an option anymore <laughs> <laughs> have the dwarves noticed us they seem to be really focused on what they're doing some of them are like polishing things some of them are like tightening ratchets some of them are chiseling away pieces of rock there's maybe five or six of them hanging up on the ceiling and they all seem to be busy are they just regular dwarves in the dark it's tough to tell they're very light skinned they appear to be wearing masks more shapeshifts to appear like an albino dwarf mm-hmm there's a, a boat? Yeah, there's two boats, two little rowboats tied up. It looks like they could each carry four people. I'd say as uh, an albino dwarf, more goes to inspect the boats and sort of check to see what sort of gear is in them and totally how well they're tied, like if it's a knot or if it's uh, a lock. Yeah, each of these are just, are they're just lashed up with a rope. Looks okay. like you'd be pretty simple to untie or cut them off. Mm-hmm. On the transom of each of the rowboats, a name is carved in. One is named Predator, the other is named Prey. Oh. Inside them, each contains two oars, an empty wooden bucket, and maybe 50 feet of rope. How many people does it look like it can fit in there? Four small or medium creatures, and their gear could fit inside each. Okay. Instead of each. Do we want to be predator or prey? Predator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds be, better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's to be at the top. Yeah. Is this where we want to go, though? Yeah. To so, so what end? I mean, there's we have no place to go in the land that we're on, right? Yeah, it's just this little dock that comes off the stairs from that, uh, like, tower that you guys came out of. I mean, Crate can walk on walls and stuff. Yeah. You yeah, could you go talk to the dwarves. Go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, take a walk. I was uh, going to say, though, okay, here, the only Put thing on about... Some cement shoes. <laughs> Sorry, Christina, what's that? I said the only thing about going into the boats is, like, we're going to be surrounded <laughs> by the dwarves. They could just shoot at us in the middle of the water. And that's coming from me. I love water, you guys. <laughs> could you? Do you want to go swimming? Like I mean, swim underneath the boat? I could do. Why would I want to do this? You could though? stick your face under and just see if there's anything bad under there. Do I have water seeing? <laughs> I, I don't mean, think so. You're, you're like a water person. I know, but I think it needs to have like be lit in some regard. I stick my flaming sword in the water. Perfect. Have a look. I look. I don't you know, stick lights. your sword in the water <laughs> to see what? Like He just wants to illuminate the water, basically. Uh, when you plunge your sword under the water, the, the fire on it steams <laughs> out as it goes into water. <laughs> cool. Um, so it doesn't really do a great job of illuminating. <laughs> right, I, I hold it over the water instead of plunging it in this time <laughs> oh, okay. after I dry it off. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking it off. Yeah. The water, it has this filmy, slimy coating almost floating on top of it. Beneath it, it's pretty dark, but... Uh, murky you can see yeah these little phosphorescent crabs are scuttering around down at the base of the water it's maybe if you had to guess 10 20 feet deep but i'm not seeing like a monster arms or anything like that moving around in there not i feel at, like they're on chains for a reason not though, at the moment like up there what they're working on is the pieces of these conduit and chains and pulleys that are, are attached to the ceiling yeah and then when they die they just leave them up there <laughs> apparently <laughs> Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Just to refresh my memory. Yeah. So we had gone into the skateboard room and that was where... <laughs> yeah, the floor, cru- the floor was slanted yeah, and there was the... The, the crushing... The, the juggernaut. Yeah. Juggernaut, yeah. yeah. And then we left from there and found a secret room that led us into this area, right? That's right. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Ahead of you, you can see what you would presume is the first gear room that you came down into. The first pentagonal room is inside that cog. 
this like big so on the outside like of the cog, 50, though? 50 foot diameter cog okay. and you're facing that one to your left there's another room that if you think about where you've been from that's probably the one that has the black dragon motif inside it the wall of the cavern behind you probably is where that control room is from and beyond these two cogs further to the east is a third cog that you can just see kind of the edge of well we were never able to get into the third cog i don't think so maybe we can boat around and get into the third cog that way yeah like that without having to mess with the control panel yeah that makes sense to me i don't want to do that control panel anymore (laughs) no okay sure i get in the predator boat okay who else is joining lee in the predator uh (laughs) don't all jump at once (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there's room for all of us in there right oh yeah we can i guess if if we want to split up what about hamlet Uh, oh hamlet has to go with you i assume all right Let's do a draft. I'm team captain. Who wants to be the other captain? Aye, aye. Okay. Where's the other captain? I wanted you, though, so that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess oh, wait, I didn't I just, want you. I, I thought you were stuck with one of these losers. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I didn't understand I guess the I question. I Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Lee and more rock, paper, scissors for first pick? Sure. I just go in the other boat <laughs> while they're doing this. I get into the predator you get into boat. The predator. Or the prey boat. Sorry. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we like scissors, so, paper, scissors. So we think too much alike. Sure. Uh, this is in. why I just go in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Crate goes into the prey boat, too. Okay. Oh, so. no. <laughs> As we're running away, we're giving you guys the finger. <laughs> it's just me and Hamlet in there. Oh, wait, you, you two are going together. Okay, me and Moore oh, are together. Yeah, no, I'll get in the predator boat. All right, we have to chase them. We're the predator. Yeah, I feel like prey should go first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, run away. Crate and Douglas are in prey, and Lee, Moore, and Hamlet are in predator. And you begin to row away. Would you prefer to go around the south end of this cog in front of you or the north end of the the far cog the, with the black dragon motif? Which is closer to the dwarves? They're spread out all over the place. Oh, okay. So even still, you're in the boat, you're starting to row out. They're not paying you any attention. That's true. They're busy. They're very busy. They got quotas to meet. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Let's let's do south side. Okay, so you row around the south side, and you go a little ways, and, and you come underneath another giant stone and metal conduit that is supported up out of the water by these big pillars, maybe three or four feet in diameter. You think this might be the hallway that you had to leave after you had fought those plant creatures hmm. down towards the juggernaut creature. You pass that, and another wide open stretch of water is before you, leading to the third cog that you guys have not been able to find a way into. On your side here, you can see another metal conduit is currently lined up with the cog, where the opening in the cog would be. And where does the conduit go to? It goes south as well, just to another section of the cave wall on the south. But it's not open, it's into the wall it's, on it's the far side? It's like the, the cog has an opening on it, the conduit has an opening on it, and they're currently aligned with each other. Does that make sense? And then that conduit comes away, like the hallway that you had gone into. Think of it like a plus 15 hall, mm-hmm. right? Lined up with the Very with this local giant reference. gear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Like an overpass. Yeah. So no obvious way to actually get in there, though. Just that six or seven inch crack where the conduit and the gear don't quite line up perfectly. Have we got through those before? We haven't tried. We've tried. Mm, you can like... That's, that's pretty narrow, six to seven mm-hmm. inches. Can you meld with like the, the thing? Oh, what? Like the metal? You can melt like with a stone. stone. I can melt of stone, but I can't go through stone. Like I have to come out the way I came in. But I could probably meld into it to at least kind of see what's on the other side. Mm-hmm. That is a, a spell, though. True. Then I don't have a ton of slots. We could just go around it, see if there is any way. Sure. Yeah, let's just check on the other side first. Maybe we can uh, try to get up on top of it, see if there's a way, like a hatch or something. The cogs themselves are 10 feet high with a ceiling another 10 feet above them. Like if you had a means of climbing, you could get on top of the cogs. That might be a better route, then. Don't have to boat around the whole time. Yeah. I'm still, I, I have fear of the water at the moment. <laughs> yeah, don't necessarily need sure. to be... A sailor afraid of the water. Can only see what's up there. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah, might as well at least see what's up there. I'll yeah. uh, scuttle up there. Okay, so uh, using your boots of spider climbing, you scuttle up on top of the cog, and you take a look around onto the other side. There is another conduit on the north side that leads into another section of the cave wall to the north. There is on the north side of the center cog, 
what appears to be another structure built out of it with a conduit that faces the the cog, but you're not sure what that is. It's sort of like an arrowhead shape of this big metal and stone structure that is maybe another smaller room that connects to the central cog. You're not sure. Aside from that, the cave appears to continue on to the east, away from the cogs, into this little channel. You can hear rushing water from that direction. Maybe there's like a waterfall or, or an inlet in there that the water is coming from. Are you relaying this information of what you're seeing? Yeah, I come back and let you know. That seems kind of enticing to me. I don't know. That smaller room is kind of an interesting. Mm-hmm. Like if it's in between other rooms, it might be another control panel. Yeah, I just don't know how we get in there. You guys know that you left the rooms in their original configuration where you could access the star room, the skateboard room, as you called it, (laughs) and nowhere else. On the central cog, there's a wavy stink line room (laughs) that appears to line up with what you think this arrowhead room is. The other two conduits that you can't get into right now, you think probably line up with the mammoth tusk insignia and the brick insignia. I think we want to get into wavy lines. Yeah, it kind of looks like a pathway or something, maybe. Mm-hmm. If this is where we actually are. Or it represents water, like we're hearing the flowing water. Yeah. And like I said, the waterfall is enticing to me at this moment. <laughs> You're hearing the flowing water from even f- further to the east. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine trying to go to stink lines. I just, again, I don't know exactly how to get there. Maybe we should ask for directions. <laughs> These guys look friendly. These guys are only like the guys who are resetting all the rooms and keeping everything going. Well, the dwarves must have a way to get a, like around places up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we they can get up there, do. maybe we can go through there like tunnels or something. Mm-hmm. You know, to head back. I don't Certain know how to get up there though. or whatever you call those. I have disguise self so I could look like another white dwarf. I thought yeah. you already were. I have spider climb so I could just climb up there. Yeah, you can get up there, maybe drop down a rope or something, tie it to something. And then we can climb up to one of the chains that they're attached to. Mm-hmm. Great, you're still up on top of there, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Okay. Suddenly there's a, a rush in the water and this splash. And Douglas, your boat begins to rock violently. I'd like you to make an acrobatics or athletics to stay in the boat. Your prey. Makes sense. Six. All right. Douglas, you're trying to hold on to the side of the boat, but it just rocks too violently, too suddenly, and you are tossed off the left side of it into the water. You splash down into the slimy, gross, filmy water, and in the water in front of you, you see this skeletal black visage with these big curling horns coming off the side. I fucking knew it, you guys. And Masterpiece goes for a bite. Oh! Roll initiative. Moore got 15 on initiative. 10 initiative for Crete. 12 for Lee. Douglas. 3. Uh, Moore, you are the first to react. Tell me what you're doing. You just saw Douglas go over the boards into the water. But I have sights on Masterpiece. No, the water's really murky here. I, I, I'm going to say you don't at the moment. You're also in a different boat, so. Mm-hmm. I'm the predator boat. I cast Armor of Shadows on myself. Okay. And you don't even know what's happening. <laughs> you just saw me go over the side. In this tomb, that's more than enough reason. You saw the like the splash of something <laughs> rocking the ship. I just thought it was boat. funny. He's all like, oh no, <laughs> mm. person overboard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an entirely reasonable thing to do. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. That makes it Masterpiece's turn. So, underwater... This amphibious battle is about to take place. Masterpiece makes a bite. 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. And two claws. A 15 and a 20. Oh. Yep. All three? Yeah. The bite, 16 damage. Okay. And five acid damage. I'm acid resistant. Ooh, nice. Okay, so you'll take half of that. So three? Yeah. And then, or, or round, round down. I oh, think. okay. Do we round down or round up? I, I always know. thought it was up. But sure. I'll round give up. myself a round up. No, I'm giving myself an extra <laughs> HP. Damage you round down. <laughs> uh, 12 slashing damage from a claw. Mm-hmm. And 11 slashing damage from a claw. Okay. Oof. I'm glad I rounded uh, up that. 
<laughs> what are you at? I'm at one. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Lee. Brutal. You saw Douglas go overboard. Moore just cast a spell, uh, wreathing the shadowy armor around him. Douglas is currently floundering, and you just saw this froth of bubbles and blood pool to the top of the water. Oh, my God. I don't want to go in, but, like, it's really awkward to fight underwater. Aren't you possessed by a certain spirit? Yeah, but it doesn't mean he's... Stu- I haven't seen anything. Actually, it is. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that actually is exactly what it makes you do stupid shit. <laughs> Read that out. Re- I think it's reckless. Would you like me to read it again? Yeah, read yeah, it read out loud for everybody. Okay. Everybody out home. I am fearless and not afraid to take great risks. Ooh. Up to you, I guess, but it sounds to me like you're going for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so too, but obviously I'm biased in this situation. <laughs> okay, I'll take my uh, staff of striking down with me. Okay. And dive into the water where I saw blood pool up. Okay, you dive in. Rules for underwater combat. Here they're coming at you. When making a melee weapon attack, a creature that doesn't have a swim speed has disadvantage on the attack roll unless it is a dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident. A ranged weapon attack automatically misses the target beyond the weapon's normal range. Even against the target within normal range, there's disadvantage unless you're using a crossbow, net, or a thrown weapon like a spear, trident, javelin. And creatures that are fully immersed in water have resistance to fire damage. Where would it say if you have a swim speed? You don't. Okay. Douglas does. Yeah, I do. I'm going to swim the fuck So I'm going to get disadvantage in all my attacks? Yes. Why did I come in here? This is stupid. I don't know. It was risky. <laughs> all right. I guess we'll try to hit him in the face. Okay. 15. Okay. Did you get extra attack? Yeah, I can hit again. Okay, go for it. 26. That hits, yeah. 15 damage. You uh, swim over Sea Masterpiece, slam him with the side of the staff into the side of his neck, thrashes a little bit, gives you uh, another look of hatred. It is Crate's turn. Lee has just jumped into the water in defense of Douglas. What do you do, Lizard Man? Sneak Man, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Less Can't... advanced form of yeah. lizard. Can I see them? Any of them? There's the water thick too murky. Well, you have dark vision, right? Yeah. You see the frothing of the water. You see the occasional wings starting to like break out of the surface of the water as Masterpiece is thrashing around. You can see where all three of the combatants are, if not necessarily have clear line of sight on them. Okay. That's, I think, probably good enough for an area of effect buff. So I will cast Bless. Ah. <laughs> all right. So that's a D4 plus two. How many of your allies? I'm going to do it as level two so I can get all four of us. Nice. And it's plus D4 and all your attack rolls and saving throws for the next, at least a minute. Very D4. nice. A D4 and all your attacks and all your attack rolls and saving throws. Not damage. Nice. Attack rolls. Well, that'll Is help that... with my disadvantage though, for sure. Douglas. I'm going to cast haste on myself. Okay. And I'm going to swim the fuck away from this guy okay. <laughs> as that doubles my speed and I have 30 underwater. So. Okay. So uh, this will be an attack opportunity. 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. That super hits. Looks like Douglas is taking a sleep as Masterpiece bites for 15 damage and some acid. Four points of acid. Can you breathe underwater? Yep. So you're not going to drown, per se? Not per se. Douglas is the one of you who couldn't. So that's why he went for me first. That makes sense. (laughs) Is it? Yep. Or does he just hate you the most? Hmm. I don't know why. I saved his fucking life. <laughs> and in theory, twice. Nobody said he's rational. <laughs> he just doesn't want to owe anybody anything. Yeah, maybe that's it. I <laughs> saved his life so he hates me. You yeah. pitied him. I thought he was a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so how you feeling? You're at negative 14 now? Yeah. You don't All feel right. anything. Crate's a little annoyed that he wasted one of his blessed targets, but... <laughs> yeah. you should feel you. You know, you know he happens. probably could have like healed me instead. It would have been uh, that wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, more. Yeah. It is your turn. Can I see masterpiece? You can see roughly. Yeah. In fact, there's this little bullseye lantern dangling from the front of your boat, mm. and it's kind of illuminating that area. And you've got a really surprisingly clear sight of this fight. In fact, you might have advantage on your attack rolls. I knew that we got in the right boat. It's a magic boat. predator boat. I couldn't see anything, though. He jumped in the water. (laughs) 
I would like to cast. <laughs> Should have stayed on the boat, I guess. <laughs> a level four concentration spell. Okay. Slow. I'm going to cast slow on masterpiece. That's my save. Wisdom fourteen. Ooh. He saves. Oh. Any move? Any bonus action? It'd be dope if any of you like tried to attack this thing. That'd be super dope. Hey, I just tried to attack it with the spell. It's not an attack. It's a slow. He's trying to would you, it. Would you have benefited if it was slowed? Mm-hmm. We'll never know because you missed. <laughs> You're the worst, Dan. <laughs> I guess I just shouldn't have bothered casting Bless Somebody at all. <laughs> is a dude, for sure. I just don't want to be the only one in front of this thing. Mm. Slow would have really helped. It would have really, really Slow helped. Slow is really good, yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, um, didn't make it. Nope. Can I paddle the boat? Is that a yeah, move you can, or is that an action? You can move it, yeah. Can I paddle the boat to try and stay in like a good position, like a nice clear shot yep. of um, sure. Masterpiece? Absolutely. Sweet. It is Masterpiece's turn again. Seeing Douglas floating lifelessly in front of him will turn his attention to Lee and will make his three attacks. 25, mm-hmm. 11, and 15. Just one. The bite hits for 18 piercing damage and one point of acid damage. And it is Lee's turn. So I'm going to hit it, yep. and I'm also going to use my ensnaring strike on it. Okay, cool. In the hopes that this, like, binds him. Neat. 21 to hit. 21 hits. And he's going to make a strength saving throw. 14. He succeeds. Okay, he takes 12 damage. And then I'm going to swing again. What's Town doing? Town's dead. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> what? Tina, why? And, he's, and he's sitting on the boat. <laughs> How'd that kill him? <laughs> Negligence. <laughs> I mean, Not that's loving a, him enough. That sounds like your responsibility specifically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that second attack, did that hit? Yeah. What did you get? So 13. 13. Solid. Lee continuing to batter and swing this quarterstaff underwater, hitting with the ram's head. Masterpiece flinching back away from it. It is now Crate's turn. Cool. We're going to start with everybody's favorite, Toll the Dead. Bong. Bong. That's a wisdom saving throw? Yes, please. Ooh, I fail. Hey, nice. what's that do? Bong. Damage. Two, 2d12 necrotic damage. Ooh. Nine necrotic damage. Okay. I also have a bonus action, which will be to summon a spiritual weapon. Oh, nice. Which is a cool little spirit snake guy. Okay. Little ethereal snake sneaks. Oh, critical hit. Nice. Natural. I think the first time I've done that this campaign, maybe. (laughs) You don't make very many attack rolls. No, it's true. Okay. And so how much damage? A total of five. The snake plunges under the water, ephemerally swirling around Masterpiece and biting at his flank, kind of harassing him and annoying him. Douglas, there you are floating underwater. Fortunately, you can still breathe, so you're not automatically dead. (laughs) Yeah. Go ahead and give me a death saving throw. You come back to life. How does this keep happening? We're we're so good at dying. (laughs) (laughs) You guys even get out of this. You guys are really good at death saving throws. Uh, So, Douglas, you're at one hit point unconscious. More, your turn. I'm going to cast Banishment. On Masterpiece? On Masterpiece. <laughs> uh, charisma 14 save. Okay. He succeeds. Oh, wow, wow. Shadowy tendrils swirling around Masterpiece underwater, attempting to drag him through this portal. He just managed to rip himself clear of them. As a bonus action, I cast Hex on him. Hey. Okay. This ephemeral shadowy shard of mirror appears as if it's protruding from the surface of Masterpiece's head as you mark him with your hex. What does that do? It allows him to do extra damage if he hits the creature with a spell or attack. Oh, you're going to try to hit it? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to hit somebody. (laughs) Okay, Masterpiece is going to go after Lee again. 28. Yep. Natural 20. 25. So you hit on all three? Yes, and oh one of the, and one of them is a crit. I'm going down, guys. Bye right. bye. Row. Two D ten plus four piercing damage for the bite. Ten plus <laughs> seven acid. A crit for the first claw. Oh my god. Twenty six slashing damage. I'm down. And the final claw, which will give you a death save failure, is 
11 slashing damage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue. No more to say about that. <laughs> Masterpiece dives, swimming underneath the two floating bodies of Douglas and Lee, disappearing underneath the Predator boat. You're next, more. That would be Lee's turn next, so go ahead and make a death save. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm okay. one away from death. Crate, it is your turn. <sighs> Can I still see uh, Lee? You can. She's floating there, drifting up to the surface. Okay. We'll start with a uh, healing word. All right. Woo! It brings Lee back to consciousness with at least a D4 of hit points. Five hit points. Nice. What are you going to do for your action? At this point, can I see uh, Masterpiece? You can see him. Just the shadowy form of him hovering underneath the predator. Look out more. And I will cast all the dead again. Okay. It's our favorite. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, so wisdom 14, please. Wisdom 14. Bong. Fail. Bong. <gasps> hey! 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 Oh! So 19 necrotic damage. Wow. Okay. Doing pretty good. The necrotic energy of the toll that you rang out reverberates through the water, and you can see black slime floating off of Masterpiece's body up towards the surface of the water. Gross. It is now Douglas's turn. You're at one hit point. I am. What are you going to do? Get in there with a dagger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. I'm going to cast Conjure Minor Elementals by him and Ooh. slash the boat. You choose a number and their challenge rating and I tell you what monster ah, it is. Ah, ah, ah. Well, I'm going to do a half rating, so four. Four pew, pew, pew. elementals, yeah. a challenge rating one half or lower. Okay, I have to find some monsters. Blowfishes. They're like underwater mines. You conjure three mud methods. What, three? Swirling around you, and appearing on your shoulder is this little black humanoid creature with a white square disc covering its face. It puts its hands on your cheek and its forehead to your head and you feel this energy surge into you. You are going to receive a supernatural charm from this Twinga. Oh. The Twinga puts its forehead to your forehead. You feel this power surge into you. This creature is gifting you with a magical charm of the jungle. Whoa. And you feel your wand be empowered. The wand of the war mage gains an additional plus one bonus to attack and damage and gains the dragon slaying feature. Oh, <laughs> well, that's perfect. <laughs> the Twinga then dissipates, disappearing Bye -bye. back into the distance of the water. So that means that you'll deal an additional 3d6 damage with anything that you use the wand for. Cool. To a dragon. The nice little guys. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's still your turn, Douglas. You have your elementals that can still do stuff. But my dudes get to attack now. Okay. Mud belch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they're just going to throw up on him. <laughs> muddy, muddy throwing ups. The breath just restrains them, which would be still quite nice. Yeah. And then the other ones can punch them. Okay. One can try and then the other ones will try if it misses, I guess. Okay. The Methods belches viscid mud onto one creature within five feet of it. If the target is medium or smaller, it must succeed a D11 dexterity saving throw or be restrained for one minute. The creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, end of the turn, ending the effect on itself on a success. He is large. Yeah, that's what I was actually just thinking when I was reading that. But they have a swim speed, so they're not taking disadvantage on attacks. Yeah. So they might as well. So they're all just going to punch him. Lay the beat down. They're going to do fists. Kay. Melee attack. Seven for one. Yeah. <laughs> An eight for the other. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> A nine. That's it. Oh, three. yeah. I only have three. Okay. Anything else on your turn, Doug? Any movement? I think I'm going to go my maximum distance away from him. Sure. <laughs> that seems fair. <laughs> More. You can tell that there's a lot of action happening underneath your boat right now. Mm. Yeah, you're su you're surrounded by mud muppets. <laughs> All the mud muppets. <laughs> <laughs> Manamana. <laughs> Manamana. More is just gonna suck it up and jump into the water. With a concentration spell, I can only cast one concentration spell at a time, but I can cast other non-concentration spells. That's right. Yep. All right. So as a movement action, I slip into the water. Mm-hmm. I change shape to look like oh, a baby dragon. 
Aww. Aww. Don't I already look like a baby dragon? Like a... <laughs> <laughs> look baby like dragon tin- Look like Tinder's dragon. Mm-hmm. Tinder's, like Tinder's baby. Tinder's baby. Yeah. Why would Masterpiece care about Tinder's baby? Yeah, I, I want And he doesn't do even know what that looks like. <laughs> I'm going to shape change to look like um, mud... Muffet, <laughs> you, you you make yourself look as if you're covered in mud. Okay. Yes, a yeah. mud muffet. That's a good mud, idea. Mud muffet doesn't know which one to hit. Mud muppet. Except he'll be the one casting spells. And I eldritch and blast. That's way okay. bigger. Okay, yeah. go ahead and roll to attack. <laughs> Plus a d4. Plus a d4. Yay. What? 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 Twenty two to hit. That hits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you're rolling multiple rays too. Oh, so. man, that's awesome. I should roll the second attack. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 28. That hits. And then so when he's hexed, it's a plus a d6. Yep. Wow. 15 damage the first time. 8 damage the second time. Not too shabby. Yeah. Pow, pow. Not bad for a mud muppet. With all these mud methods swirling around him, Masterpiece is going to lash out at the biggest of them. <laughs> <laughs> so smart. <laughs> That's a 21 to hit. That hits. <laughs> An 18 to hit. That hits. And a 17 to hit. Those all hit. That is 17 piercing damage and 7 acid damage from the bite. Oh, I have resistances to acid. So you will take 3 points of acid damage. And then 2 claws. 18 slashing damage from claws. Okay. Masterpiece just attempting to rip and tear through each of you in turn. It is now Lee's turn. Okay. I'm going to swim to the surface and cast my healing spirit. All right. At the surface of the water, a ghostly and celestial town, (laughs) the ghost, walks across the water Mm -hmm. and licks at your forehead. No. All right. So I went up to the surface so I could get a breath of air, basically, and heal up a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to swim back down at what's his face? Okay. <laughs> masterpiece <laughs> of shit. Oh. oh. Got him. Yep. You hurt his feelings. Good. Very minimum. 26. 26 hits. 11 damage. Okay. Let's do this again. 21. 21 hits. 12 damage. You smack Masterpiece across the face with the staff. His head whips to the side. You can see this like bloodshot, pure rage in him. He's obviously very wounded. There's blood and and ooze and acid streaming from his mouth and from the side of his head. It is now Crate's turn. Let's start with the spiritual weapon. I'm going to take a little bite out of crime. (laughs) What? Go snake! Go snake! This will go down as Jake's best rolling episode yeah. in House of Bob history. Wow. Eight necrotic damage. Eight necrotic damage from this ghostly snake latches on to Masterpiece's neck, starts to wrap and coil its body around his sinuous neck, biting again and again into the jugular of the dragon, Whoa. and it dies. Didn't need that. Good job, Sneaky. Stab or whatever it was. (laughs) Nice work, everybody. Crate watches in grim satisfaction (laughs) as Masterpiece, the black dragon, his body floats to the surface of the water, the snake dissipating into smoke as it leaves all these gaping wounds along the dragon's body. You guys have killed Masterpiece, the black dragon. You're now level nine. Congratulations. We'll see you in two weeks. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, number one way is to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Furthermore, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share our new episodes on social media. Visit the House of Bob merch website on Etsy for House of Bob zines, dice trays, art prints, and more. And by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. House of Annihilation is made possible by our Patreon supporters. Mike from the Tales of the Glass Garden World podcast, Kieran Duffy, Sylvia Douglas, Luke Conroy, and Volt. Thank you. And if you'd like to be part of making this podcast possible, visit patreon.com slash the house of Bob.
Maybe you'll do more this time. Yeah. Hey! Ooh. <laughs> that joke's not going to get old. <laughs> nope, not That's the all. first time, so we'll see. <laughs>